So what I, I want to do today is we are finally starting longitudinal and lateral stability. Okay? We have been looking at the A matrix and look at the eigenvalues in order to find or in order to judge stability about uh, the trim point, about the equilibrium point of the airplane. Um, but uh, as you have seen probably in the last lectures, you n always need to find um, the A matrix, the, the system matrix of the uh, Sixtoff equations. And that's not easy to find because you need all the aerodynamic variables, uh, the derivatives, I'm sorry, aerodynamic derivatives. And that's not easy to find, right? Even if you have them, um, sometimes you just don't need the whole A matrix. You don't need the whole picture in order to judge on the stability of an aircraft. For instance, how do you change, how do you move the eigenvalues? Let's say I have an airplane and I tell you the airplane is not stable or you don't like the stability properties, you want less oscillations or something. So what do you do? How do you change the A matrix in order to make this aircraft stable again? Right? Well, there are a lot easier things that you can look at. All right? And that's what we will start looking here in this, in this starting from today. Those are the things we're going to look at. We're going to look at a little bit from another perspective. Um, we are going to look at st static stability properties first of the longitudinal and then of the lateral dynamics of a fixed-wing airplane. Uh, a bit more from a physical point of view, not the system dynamics point of view, the way we have looked at in the past uh, few weeks. Okay? So before I do that, I would like to start with a, a, a small, really, really topic here, and that's, um, that's the non-dimensionalization of the aerodynamic derivatives or the parameters in general. Okay? So I, I, I want to call this um, the non-dimensional aerodynamic uh, variables and derivatives. Okay, and let's let make this a little topic here. All right. So we would like to look at the non-dimensional, we like to non-dimensionalize some of the aerodynamic variables, in, in particular the forces, moments, velocities and things like this that are somewhat related to aerodynamics. Okay? So um, the first thing I like to non-dimensionalize, so why do we non-dimensionalize these things? I mean at first, I, for instance, I want to non-dimensionalize x, y and z, the aeropropulsive forces in the body, uh, in the Body, written in the body coordinate system. I like to non-dimensionalize these numbers. Okay, so we like to non-dimensionalize them. Basically, we are going to divide them with a certain number that makes sense. Right? Let's put it that way. So, the way we're going to non-dimensionalize this, we are going to non-dimensionalize this with the dynamic pressure. Right? This is what we consider to be the dynamic pressure. 1 over 2 rho times V0 square, V0 being the free stream velocity, okay, or the local air velocity, and S being a reference area. And we do this when we are calculating lift and drag, right? We, and when you non-dimensionalize this, this is a, this is a, first of all, this is force. It has a, velocity square, density, and a reference area. This is, first of all, force. So if you non-dimensionalize this x, for instance, if you divide x by this number, you, we, the, the, the symbology will be Cx. Okay? It just means it's a non-dimensional form of x. It's still x, it's just non-dimensionalized with this particular number, which is really the dynamic pressure. Okay? If you non-dimensionalize y, if you divide y by this number, you will get cy, and z by this number, you will get cz, okay? Where v0 would be the local air velocity, velocity, 
rho is the density, and S is the reference area. Reference area. Okay. So uh, the reference area could be just anything at this point. Um, if it's a fixing airplane, we typically take the wing area. Uh, but it could as well be something else. But we need to all know with what we non-dimensionalize this. Okay. So why do we non-dimensionalize <coughs> things in first place? Why do, we, why do I non-dimensionalize x? Why do I non-dimensionalize y? The reason we non-dimensionalize things is because um, it is easier to compare. Okay? If I tell you an, uh, an aircraft has an x-force of 100,000 newtons, is this big or small? I mean, for a big airplane, it is okay. It is not, you know, it is fine. But if it's for a small airplane, it's humongous. It's a very big force, right? It doesn't make, I mean, it, it, those kind of forces don't even exist for a small airplane. So how do we compare them? Now, if you non-dimensionalize it with the wing area now, suddenly you can compare it because the wing area now reduces, I mean, you divide it by the wing area. So how big the airplane is, is somehow embedded in this, in this, in this S here. Right? A big airplane will be divided by a big surface area, a small one will be divided by a small surface area. On the other hand, if it's an aeropropulsive force, I would like to know how fast are you going. I mean, okay, you, you tell me you have this big force, this big X force, but how fast were you going? Were you going slow or, or fast? Because if you're going slow, then that X force is, is again humongous. right? But if you're going fast, then yeah, you might have that big force because you're going fast and you might have all this drag in the x-direction. So how do we get that? So then we look at the speed, the, the velocity, the air velocity. And then if you divide it by the square of the air velocity, you suddenly have something to compare. So at the end of the day, and then you look at the density, and at the end of the day, if you tell me Cx of any aircraft, small, big, medium, whatever, I can immediately say that X is large or small compared to that airplane. It's basically X force compared to the flight condition and the, the, how big the airplane is. Okay, it's like a comparison. So that's why we like to work in non-dimensional coefficients because you tell me a CX or a CY or a CZ, I can immediately tell you if it's a large, uh, if it's a large force compared to that vehicle and that flight condition or if it's a small force compared to that flight condition in that airplane. Without even asking you how big is the airplane, how fast were you going? Okay? So it's a very good tool to, to, to compare uh, forces and velocities and things like this once you non-dimensionalize it. Okay? So that's why it is so important. And this big C basically tells us that it has been non-dimensionalized. Okay? One more thing. This v, v0, I don't call it V-infinity on purpose because V-infinity is the, is the instantaneous local air velocity, okay? And that air velocity might change during flight, of course, okay? V-infinity does change as you fly, isn't it? You can go slower, faster and all this. But here you have to choose one V-infinity and non-dimensionalize it with that V-infinity at that point, okay? So, for instance, if we want to analyze the, the trim condition of an aircraft at, I don't know, 0 0.6 Mach, or, right? okay, or, or at 800 kilometers per hour, let's analyze the stability like we did for in the previous lectures of an airplane which is flying at, say, 800 kilometers per hour. Then we, I would just linearize it around that 800 kilometers per hour and then leave it there and analyze it analyze the aircraft around that equilibrium point. So then the non-dimensionalization is done with really one number. I mean, as the airplane flies and V-infinity is changing, this V0 will not change. Okay? Once we non-dimensionalize it, that's the number we would like to non-dimensionalize it with. Okay? Of course, you can non-dimensionalize it at each instant in time. That's also something you can do. All right? 
but this is different. I mean, this is uh, um, you could do this too, but you need to know that you are non-dimensionalized at each instant in time with some fold velocity. What we like to do here in this case, we like to take one velocity, non-dimensionalize it, and take this number here, and and think of this number as the number you like to non-dimensionalize the forces. That's it. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. So, we also like to non-dimensionalize L and N, the aeropropulsive moments, okay, the L moment and the N moment. So, you non-dimensionalize it this time with something similar, with your square times S. Again, the dynamic pressure, as we had over there, times B. Because now this is a moment, you need to non-dimensionalize it with a moment. Now this is a force times a distance. This must be a distance. And for the distance we use B, and B is the wingspan. I mean, typically one might use the wingspan to non-dimensionalize it. And you will get C with a small l and a small n. So the moments are written with a small n and a small n. And this is typically the wing span. Now this is here is a moment. It's, I mean, uh, in terms of units, it's a moment, right? It's a force times uh, distance. So we like to use the wing span. For the M, for the pitching moment, we do something similar. 1 over 2 rho v0 square s times, but this time we would like to use a court, OK? And we called it C M. Okay? The non-dimensional um, pitching moment. And C, we would like to use the chord. But typically, since the chord is not really constant on an airplane always, we can use the so-called the mean chord. Mean chord. Basically, taking the chord average if the chord is changing throughout the span. Okay? So you can change the mean chord. So, why do I use the wingspan for L and N, but mean chord for M, the pitching moment? Well, the reason is because L and N are really happening in the lateral direction, right? You do this, look up here, real quick. You do this with L. And with N, you do this. So the bigger factor for this would be B, right? The wingspan. So the wingspan is going to do this, or the wingspan is going to move like that. So a lot of information is really uh, uh, embedded in the wingspan. The wingspan will have a large effect on the, on the, on the, on the yaw and on the roll. However, on the moment, on the pitching moment, the bigger factor would be the chord. If you have a big chord wing, it would be harder to move the big chord of the wing as compared to a small chord of the wing, right? So therefore, we like to use chord for this. One thing you need to be cautioning is that L, N, and M are small variables. The big CL is reserved for something else, right? What is CL? CL is CL, like the lift, okay? So in order to, I mean, you know, we use L for the, for the, for the moment, the rolling moment, but L is sometimes also written as lift, right? So, but in flight mechanics, we always, unless otherwise specified, we always say this is that. But you could also think of it like this. Let's say you have the lift force L. How do you non-dimensionalize the lift force? You do exactly that. 1 over 2 rho v0 square s, and you get CL. You see? This is the lift coefficient. Not to, not to confuse with the small l. Now, this is the non-dimensional rolling moment. This is the non-dimensional <coughs> lift, which we call the lift coefficient. You ever wondered where this is coming from? Wonder where this formula is coming from? It's coming from here. It's nothing but non-dimensionalizing the lift force by the dynamic pressure. And you get a non-dimensional number. 
if you multiply this non-dimensional number with the thing that's non-dimensionalized, you get the lift. You see? So this CL, you might wonder where CL is coming from, how magically CL appears. CL is nothing but non-dimensionalizing lift with dynamic pressure. And then we treat it as if this was a real formula derived from somewhere. It's really a f something that, that we use to non-dimensionalize. If you would, for example, remove 1 over 2 or change this S, this, the definition of CL would change. So the definition of CL is really defined how you non-dimensionalize things. Okay. The difference is that V0 was constant overall. In our lift formula, we changed it with V infinity, which really says that at each, each instant, we re-dimensionalize re lift. Okay. All right. So we can also non-dimensionalize U, V, and W. Okay. So we non-dimensionalize this with V0 or sometimes with U0 if the airplane is mostly going uh, at a small uh, angle of attack. You might use the body U velocity or V0 directly the, the air velocity that's happening. And we would like to call it a U hat, a V hat and W hat. So it's non-dimensional velocities. Non-dimensional forces, non-dimensional moments, non-dimensional velocities. Similarly, we non-dimensionalize angular velocities, alpha dot, beta dot, and q, so as a function of time. So that will be non-dimensionalized. And we usually non-dimensionalize it with 2 v0 divided by c bar or u0 divided by c bar, okay? v0 is the um, free stream velocity, v0, or u0 is the um, body x velocity. So it will be this, just non-dimensional values. second here. Okay, so if you take this a bit further, for instance, we had del x del u, remember? And we, this is the partial derivative, we used to call this x u. This is the change in the body x force because of the body velocity u. So what happens to the Fourth velocity uh, to the force x if I change u, right? That's the partial derivative, given that everything else is constant. So that's what it means. So if you would non dimensionalize this, you would get something like that, right? Del cx, non dimensional x force versus non dimensional forward velocity. You would get something like this cx u. So it is a non-dimensional partial derivative that tells me how x would change 
if I would change you on the airplane, but everything else being constant. And u and x here are non-dimensional variables. x is non-dimensional, u is non-dimensional. Does that make sense? Or for example, del m del w. Right? You call this m w. So if you would use non-dimensional moments, so the non-dimensional moment is this one, cm with a small m, with the non-dimensional w velocity, you would get cmw. Okay? It is the non-dimensional partial derivative that tells me how the pitching moment would change with the change in w. Okay? You can also do this for the angles. Cm del alpha is equal to m alpha, right? Partial derivative. And th these are kind of similar, you see that, right? And this one here, and this w is still represents somewhat the angle of attack. So this is similar, but you could also write Cm divided by C alpha, so you would get Cm alpha. And what, you, what you're having here on this side now are the partial derivatives, but all non-dimensional. And we really like that too. Because now if you tell me Cm alpha for an airplane, I can immediately make a comment saying that this is high or low, or the sign is wrong, or something like that. Because if this was for a dimensional one, m alpha, for a big airplane this might be large, for a small airplane this might be small. In fact, changing on the, depending on the flight condition, this might be large or small. So if you just tell me m alpha, I cannot really comment too much. I will ask you, how fast is the airplane going? How big is the airplane? At what altitude is this happening? So I can make a comment saying that this is bad or good or whatever. But if you just tell me CM alpha after you non-dimensionalize, it doesn't matter how big the airplane is or where it flies or how high it flies, I will immediately be able to tell you something saying that this CM alpha is large or this CM alpha is small or the sign is wrong, depending on um, just by looking at this number without even looking at the airplane or its velocity. Okay, so therefore this non-dimensionalization non is really, really useful. And especially the partial derivatives, the partial aerodynamic derivatives. They become very nice to handle once they are non-dimensional. Okay? All right, so let's make a little table and look at all of these non-dimensional variables. Let's look at the longitudinal dynamics. Okay, and the assumption was that the longitudinal dynamics doesn't affect the lateral, the lateral doesn't affect the, the, the longitudinal. So let's make a little table. Okay, here I put Cx, everything that's in longitudinal dynamics. Cx is the non dimensional x force, the aeropropulsive force, non dimensional z force, and moment. And here we will have the variables u, alpha, q and alpha dot. Okay? So the partial derivative of this, basically the change in Cx because of u, would look like this. See, these are the, all the longitudinal variables. I don't have the lateral variables here. Right? So this would be Czu and this would be Cmu. Partial derivative. Change of the moment because of u which means I keep everything the same, I just increase or decrease u, how does the moment change? I change u, everything else is the same, how does z change? How does x change? Here, this would be Cx alpha, Cz alpha, Cm alpha. How does the z force change if I change alpha, right? I could have also used w instead of alpha, you understand that, right? So the number would be different, but alpha would still represent it by, alpha, by w. This could be cq, and this could be cq alpha dot, czq, cmq, cz alpha dot, cm alpha dot, okay? 
uh, some of the important partial derivatives in the longitudinal axis. And you could do the same thing for lateral dynamics. Right. Let's put the lateral ones, Cy, Cl, the rolling moment, and Cn, um, the, uh, the yawing moment. Side slip, P, R, beta dot. Again, the partial derivatives would look like this, Cy beta, Cl beta, Cn beta, Cyp, Clp, Cnp, Cyr, Clr, Cnr, Cy beta dot, Cl beta dot, and Cn beta dot. Okay, so everything longitudinal, everything lateral. So these things we call non-dimensional aerodynamic derivatives non-dimensional aerodynamic derivatives. What happens is that some of these aerodynamic derivatives are very important in terms of the behavior of the airplane. Okay? I mean all these partial derivatives we had already in our calculations and they were forming the A matrix, the system matrix and we looked at the eigenvalues. However, some of them are more important than the others and some of them are extremely important. Okay? For instance, we will be taking a real close look in CM on CM alpha. CM alpha is one of the variables that really define the stability in the longitudinal axis. Very important variable. CMQ, the change of the moment because of Q. So if I have a pitch rate, will I get a resistance to bring me back? Okay, so that's CMQ. Or CXU. If I increase velocity, will I have a resistance to slow me down or not? Right? The so called speed stability. On this side, CL beta, very important. Okay, CNR, again, very important variable. CN beta, very important. Not to say that the others are not, not important, but these are really fundamental. I really need to know, especially the sign or sometimes the magnitude, so that I can tell you this airplane is good or bad. It will be stable, unstable, too stable maybe, not stable enough, I don't know. But now we're going to look at a physical point of view onto these <coughs> variables. Okay. For example, CM alpha. Let's talk about CM alpha. Did you write this? Can I move this? Let's look at that. Let's look at CM alpha for a second. Del CM, del alpha. Okay? So what does it say? It says this. Let's say I have an airplane. It's in trimmed flight. Okay. It's in trimmed flight. If it's in trimmed flight, what are the moments that act on this airplane? Is there a moment that acts on the airplane if it's in trimmed flight? No, right? Because trim means there's, there are no moments on this airplane. And the total forces and moments are equal to zero. So no moments. So M is equal to zero for this flight condition, right? 
m is equal to zero for this flight condition. Let's say for some reason the airplane gets an alpha. I don't know why. There might be a gust, there might be a wind, or, or, or a bird is hitting the airplane, I don't know. Somehow you get an, at an alpha for whatever reason. And momentarily everything else is constant. You just have now, let's call it a delta alpha, okay, which you didn't have before. Okay? So the question is now, if for stability, will there be a moment that will bring me back because of this alpha? I mean, because of this alpha, will, will this airplane generate a moment in this direction so that the airplane will go back, nose down, so that you have this flight condition again? that you, can, you are back to the original flight condition with m equals zero. The question is, does that appear? And does it appear in this direction? Because if it was appearing in the other direction, we would be in trouble, right? You have an alpha, and because of this alpha, let's say you have a moment in the opposite direction, you will get even a bigger alpha. And because of that big alpha, you will get even a bigger moment, and you will just diverge. So what I really want is, if I have an alpha, I want a moment that will bring me back, isn't it? Okay, so if that's the case, I can immediately tell you the sign of this partial derivative. What should be the sign of this partial derivative? For a positive alpha, if alpha is positive, I want a, is this a positive or a negative moment? It's a negative moment. So for a positive alpha, I want a positive moment. So del m, del alpha, should be for a positive alpha, if I get a negative moment, then I have stability here. So this should be a negative or a positive derivative here. What is this? This number, is, should this be positive or negative for stability? It should be negative. So this should be negative. So in the, in the, in the limit, you know, this is a small delta, in the limit this is a partial derivative and it will it should still be negative, which really means CM alpha should be negative. In order to tell me this, I don't really have to look at the A matrix. M must be neg negative for a positive alpha. Okay? So CM alpha for airplanes must be negative so, th so that you have some sort of static stability. I'm not talking about dynamic stability, by the way, at this point, right? We're talking about static stability. Just the initial tendency for the airplane to come back. Remember the definition for static stability? Static stability is the initial tendency of a system after it is perturbed from the equilibrium point, right? So if we perturb it from the equilibrium point, initial tendency is to come back. Why? Because there's a moment. In order for this moment to happen, I need CM alpha to be less than zero. If this, uh, let's put it in another way. If this moment, if this moment here is a very small moment, will it still be statically stable? Why not? Statically stable. Will it be statically stable or not? It will be statically stable because the airplane's tendency is to come back. It's just that it will take a really long time to come back. <coughs> if this <coughs> Sorry, if this moment is too large, for this alpha, if I get a really large moment, will this be something good? No, I mean, it will be too large, it will come back very quickly, it will be statically stable, but it will probably overshoot and then oscillate or something. So it will change the dynamic stability characteristic. So if you tell me CM alpha for any airplane, a certain number, I can tell you what that number should be for an airplane to nicely come back after you are perturbed from alpha. You see? That's why this is so, so useful. Because if this was a big airplane, then a, what is a big moment for a big airplane? What's a big moment for a small airplane? You need to compare <coughs> it with their flight condition and the airplane, how big the airplane is. And if you non-dimensionalize it, you really have one number that you can work with. Understood? So, this is that. 
So another question then for you, since we are so getting experts on this, how about del cm del q? What would you like this number to be? Would you like this a negative number or a positive number if you consider to be a nice stable airplane? And here you, here you might want to write, this is for static stability. Okay, this is for static stability because the dynamic stability characteristics is really related on how big this number is. Okay? But for static stability, this should definitely be negative because if you have an alpha, the tendency must be to come back. How about this one? Should this be positive or negative? What do you think? Again, we have an airplane in trimmed flight. Suddenly there's a Q, an angular, you know, an angular rate, a, 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 a pitch rate. How, what should be the moment for a positive pitch rate in order to come back to the equilibrium. What did you say? What? What is it? Huh? Negative. negative. It should be negative, right? Because if you have a positive pitch rate, you need a, po mo a negative moment, right? Positive pitch rate, negative moment. Negative pitch rate, you need a positive moment. So this should definitely be also, so for this positive Q, you will need a negative moment, right? Or, it could be the other way around, you might have a negative pitch rate, you will need a positive moment. So in any case, if this is negative, this must be positive. If this is positive, this is negative. So this is definitely, again, less than zero for static stability. Okay. So we can make these kind of um, talks about these partial derivatives, okay? So, we could of course look at other things. We could, we could look at, um, I don't know, CNR. How about this one? Would this be negative or positive? Of course, this is CMQ, right? Now, CMQ. This one here is CM alpha. Right, this is CM alpha, CM alpha, CMQ, CNR. So basically del CN del R. Should this be positive or negative for static stability? What do you say? Again, negative, right? For a positive yo rate, you would need a negative moment in order to come back. Let's say you have an airplane, look up here, and you have a yawing moment like that, what do you need? You need a moment in the opposite direction to bring you back. So for static stability, you would probably need that. Okay. For static stability. Let's say you have an airplane for where this number is a positive number. What does it mean? just means that it's not statically stable in the yaw direction, right? If this was a negative positive number, it wouldn't be. So these are the comments that I would like to make. And, and, and note that I'm making physical comments here. For a positive moment, you need a negative, uh, for a positive alpha, you need a negative moment, right? For a negative alpha, you need a positive moment. So I'm making <coughs> physical interpretations here. And what we are going to do next is we are really going to look at the longitudinal static stability static stability and we're going to make a, take a closer look at this for airplanes without looking at the A matrix because the A matrix was telling us all these things stable, unstable and all this but it wasn't really giving us much of a physical insight we were just looking at eigenvalues at the whole picture 
But now we are going to go one by one into those aerodynamic variables in these partial derivatives and try to make some physical sense out of this. Any questions up to these things? So let's give a break. In the next hour, we'll focus on the longitudinal static stability.